Acts chapter, I mean, Romans chapter 2. She has been saying Acts so long. Who, knowing the judgment of God, the day which commits such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, old man. Who are we talking about? We're talking about these people who are sinning and enjoying it. Whosoever thou art the judges. And this is the great debate of judging. Judge not, least he be judged. And that's what this chapter is going to talk about. It's talking about judgment. And the main cause, we are to judge with mercy. Sinners don't want you to judge. Because they would find out in Romans chapter 1, oh, that's what I'm doing is bad, but I enjoy it. And I don't want to know about it because I will be held accountable. Even though I don't believe in God, I will be held accountable to God, though I don't want to believe in it. And what we learned in Romans chapter 1, though we deny God, we believe in God. These people, evolution, will stand before the God that they deny and know that is God and have to give an account for what they believe, what they taught, what they live. And what gives them the right to judge me when I preach the gospel, when somebody brings Jesus Christ to your door? Who do you think you are? Well, who do you think you are? You're going the way of, of Antichrist. I'm going the way of Christ. For wherein thou judges another. Ooh, that's the big thing. So America and the world today, let's judge no one no more. That commit that commit is commend that condemnest thyself. For thou that judges does the same thing. Everyone judges. We judge everybody all the time. And people are judging you. I judge people and people are judging me. I condemn myself by looking at someone else and, and condemning them. But we are sure that judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things. This Bible is the standard of judgment. If I say that's an ugly dress that woman's wearing, well, you know what? I got ugly clothes, don't I? But if I say that woman in her conduct of her life, you know what? I believe you're a sinner. And I need to judge you as a sinner and deal with you as a sinner. I will have the word of God say, do it. If I got a Christian, I look at that Christian and say, you know, I mean, you're still wearing diapers. Let me get you potty trained in the word of God. And the Bible will say, train them, guide them. And I'm not in proper judging. I would be proper to judge that red light to stop. And if I don't, there may be severe consequences. My standard of trust my standard of judgment that God will allow me is by the Bible. Now, let's talk about that woman with the ugly dress for a moment. Let's say we got a Christian and she's wearing a dress that's very provocative, very fleshy. I know the Bible. The Bible says, that's wrong. And we're going beyond, that's an ugly color. That's an ugly, ugly pattern. We're going by the Bible. It says, lady, you're not doing right. And that'd be like me, verse 1, going out and saying, look at that slob over there. And then somebody seeing me out in the public say, look at that guy. He's got, he's got a shirt that's got ketchup stains. And look at that slob. I'm judging a slob because I've been a slob. I know what a slob is, and I'm condemning myself for being a slob. And I can look at you as far as what the Bible says, living and reading and studying the Bible and living a Christian life, look at you and say, you know what, you're not doing it right. And God will take that side and God will say, you don't understand why that guy could be a slob. He may have to run out of, run out of the house because his child is in an emergency room. You don't know. 
You don't have the facts. When it comes to the Bible, you do have the facts. To all a judge, you judge every day. And the fact is that you walk out of your house completely clothed, so the fact that you judge what to put on that day. And thinkest thou this, O oh man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? You're looking at that guy, you're saying, and you're doing it. But God is pleased with me. If you've done any kind of public ministry, that's what they believe. God would never approve what you're doing. Well, what are you doing? I let my light shine. I am so much better than what you're doing with the Bible. God approves of me just letting my light shine. And if you've been in any kind of public ministry, you know, you've heard that. And you've told the Bible, says, person, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're saying. Well, who do you think you are? Judge not least you be judged. Hebrews 9 27 judging they're judging you and say that to him. say one minute judge not at least be judged uh, shouldn't be saying but aren't you judging me and then you watch a battle come forth mm -hmm. we all judge there's a worldly judgment and then there's a godly judgment when your wife comes up to you and she, whatever she's wearing whatever it's her hair or the, she looks at you said honey what do you think about this you're now judging You've asked to judge. Honey, does this tie go good with this suit? You're asking for judgment. Oh, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, God's goodness, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Judgment brings riches of God's goodness. It brings forbearance. It brings long-suffering. It brings goodness. It will bring you to repentance. If I were to take a brother or a sister in law and say, come here. And not in big public, say, come over here. You see this verse right here? You're not living right. Shh, don't tell anybody else. Just between you and me. Is that what Jesus said? Call off this side and show them the scripture. And that guy said, hey, you know what? I didn't know that. I want to thank you. That will bring repentance by me judging that guy. I say, hey, you know what? You're not doing right. If I stand in the street corner and yell that you're going to hell without the blood of Jesus Christ, and somebody say, hey, you know what? From that book that guy's preached, he's right. What will that bring? That will bring repentance. What is that? That's the goodness of God. For the saved man, for the lost man, that's the forbearance of God. That's the long suffering of God. What's the long suffering? That Christian may get mad at you and won't get right five, ten years down the road, five, ten months down the road. I wish that guy wouldn't have been mad at me. I, I tried to do right. I wish those people would turn to Jesus Christ right now in five months, five years down the road. Maybe they will get right. And see, I already judged them. And you're not going to get right. You're not going to do right. Now, I've judged them wrongly. But when I say you're going to hell without believing on Jesus Christ from your heart, that's proper judgment. And that's good. And people don't realize it. That's long suffering. That's good. People don't realize it. But after thy hardness, thy hardness, and impending it heart. Look at my notes here. Unrepentant heart. Treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness judgment of God. People who will not listen to you to preach the truth, judge not least ye be judged, are going to stand before the judge one day and they're going to get the wrath of God. And they will realize you with the Bible were correct. And why do you do the public ministry? Why do you tell people about Jesus? So they will not stand before God guilty as they will here. You realize what the Bible says? When you're at the great white throne judgment, you're just not talking to God. you got the wrath of God. 
before you're even cast off in the lake of hell. You've already been burning for how many years in hell? A minimum of a thousand years. People will be burning in hell. The millennial Jesus Christ. A minimum. The wrath of God. And then standing before that wrath of God that is angry with you when people have told you what to do. And then him casting you off in the lake of fire. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Revelation 20 says all the books are open. And men were judged by those works. And when I tell you your works can't save you. God is going to put you on a balance beam. A, a uh, scale of everything you've done. Compared to everything that Jesus Christ has done. And you better equal out what you're not ever going to do. And what you're thinking by working your salvation. You will get what you deserve by your way of thinking that what you did is better than God. It's a scary thought for somebody to think that they're better than Jesus. And stand before Jesus that day. Can you think about that? Can you imagine a man naked, scarred naked, shaking without boots, standing before the God trying to plead to him why he thought he was better than that God on the throne? And they come up to you, judge not least you be judged. You have no love. Really? Don't you see the love when Paul's talking about the judge here that what we do is for their own good? When a, when a spouse asks, asks their spouse, does this dress, does this tie look good? They're doing it because, hey, you know, I don't want to look like an idiot out there. I don't want to look stupid out there. When a wife calls her husband, hey, come back in here for a minute. Hold on, let me... Let me fix you up. You ain't going out there like that. You can think she's judging. You can think she's nagging. But she's doing it because of love. She don't want you to look like an idiot. I don't want to see people stand before God condemned. That's why I go out there. It's real actuality. It's love that I will stand there and tell you to go to hell. And yet I've had Christians get upset and have nothing to do anymore because I've preached about ATLF. You can't say the word to them. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing. What's the subject? Taking people and judging them by what the book says. People who are involved in a ministry. The lost and saved people. Nursing home, knocking on doors, preaching in the street, raising Christians up. To them that patiently continue. It takes patience to have a ministry, whether lost people or saved people. It takes patience. But what is the end run? In well-doing. I want God to be pleased with the person I'm dealing with. And I want God to be pleased with what I'm doing. Seek for glory. I want God's glory. And honor. I want God's honor. And immorality. Eternal life. Look at Cornelius. That was a wonderful guy. That angel said. Hey. You need to go get Peter. He went and got Peter. Peter said you need to do this. He oh judge not least you be judged. Man I brought you over here. No. He gave in to the word of God and got right and his family got saved. By someone judging you by the word of God, you can get eternal life. You can get immorality. I'm immortal. You can never kill me. You say, we well, can put your body in the grave. Absent from the body present with the Lord. And when the Lord calls the rapture, my body's coming up to get a new body. You can't kill me. I'm a glorified zombie. There will be a zombie apocalypse of Christians being called up to the clouds. Coming out of the graves. 
Satan has got you to believe it, it's going to be brain eating. The only brain eating is the Catholics on Sunday morning. Oh. But unto them that are contentious, that's not a good word, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So verse 7 is those who, hey, okay, yeah, you're right. Verse 8, get out of here. Pharaoh is an example in the book of Exodus. Tribulation, didn't he get tribulation? And didn't Moses keep telling him over and over and over, do this. God said do this. And anguish. You know how many times that guy got angry? You get out of here, but leave the children. You get out of here, you leave your animals. Upon every soul of man that doeth evil. That's from God. You say, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Marvel not the world hate you. That's the world and Satan. I get tribulation and anguish and all. That's temporal. But when you don't believe God, and reject God and judge God wrong, you'll get this all for eternity. The Gospel of Luke said, Oh boy, as soon as I said that, it goes right on my head. Torments in hell for all eternity. I'm tormented. I'm being tormented in torments. I don't get that no more under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you know, April. 1987 that Saturday afternoon when they opened the Bible to me they said Stiley you're a sinner I said yeah I am I'm not telling you either what I did no, no we're not part of that religion <laughs> I wasn't going to confess no sins to no man and you realize because of those sins you're going to hell oh what must I do you got to put your faith and trust that Jesus Christ can wash you of your sin and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Really? Okay. And with that, I get glory, honor, immortality, eternal life. We deal with people every week. We try to tomorrow, pray for us tomorrow. People who continue to go buy their watermelons will not believe. They get tribulation, anguish. And they may not get it in this earth. But oh, when they step off eternity, it's too late. When that man wakes up in hell, I don't know. But I, I would assume some, because there's no time, we can't say time. But I assume some, when he's in hell, he remembers in, the, the preaching he heard while buying watermelons. You know, that's an anguish. Can you imagine hearing my obnoxious, loud voice in hell condemning you when you could have believed? Wanting a juicy apple that you can't have no more? How's that? You can never taste corn anymore. You'll never get a watermelon no more. You can't get a balloon. You won't be able to hear bongos anymore. And you were told and you told me not to judge. And you judged me to shut up. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Now Paul is New Testament, right? He's church age, right? Watch this. Of the Jew first and also the Gentile. Jews are always God's people. Even in the church age. And if that Jew will not trust the Messiah, will not believe on Jesus Christ, he gets that anguish of hell first in his life before the Gentile. You know there are different degrees of hell. And we're going to see as we go through Romans, Jews and Gentiles. And then the Gentiles that will not believe will end up also in hell. And as we're talking about judgment here, you know what the greatest danger I have in this chapter? I have studied the Bible. 
I have a degree of Bible education. I have read through the Bible countless years. I have many outlines. I have gone from Genesis 1, we're in Revelation 2 now. Romans 2. Can't get even book right. Do you know I will be judged more than someone who just sits in church service or doesn't even go to church? Because I ought to know better. You read the book. Why'd you do that? And we'll get in that later on. What we read today as a family in Paul. But God is judging me because I know more. And I ought to be better than what I am. And that's a sin. And I can point at that in my life and say, that is my sin. I don't do better than I should. I don't need anybody to tell me that. I've judged myself. And you know what? When I stand in the street corner and I yell at you, you're going to hell without Jesus Christ. You better be, judge not least you be judged. You better know when you ask my family. I will judge my sins at Calvary's cross and put them under the blood of Jesus Christ. Before I judge you, I judge myself. I have the nerve that many Christians won't do. Sometimes when I can't sleep at night, I will say, Lord, all right. It's going to be a while before I can get to bed. A couple hours. Lord, is there anything right now between you and me that's getting in the way? Okay, patience. That's always first. I swear, that's first. I don't even get the word, the question out of my mouth. Patience will come in. But then God will say, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? Lord, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, Lord, I need victory. Lord, I need to stop that. Now go Saturday and tell them about Christ. You're clean. Don't mind that person come judge not. Hey, I don't see anything in your life. And we'll get that, I believe it's Corinthians, where we're supposed to judge ourselves before we look at other people. Yes. Well, yeah, we're gonna I think it's Corinthians, maybe Romans. I think it's Corinthians where Paul says we gotta judge ourselves. You got to come to the cross, and even after say we got an advocate, the Father. You got to look at your life, and say God, I'm sorry, and try to improve your life. You got to look at yourself, and say you know what, I'm worthy of judgment by myself. But glory, honor, and peace. To every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, also to the Gentile, that's not salvation. You do good. You're a good person and all that. All right. You get good things. That's You reap what you sow. But that's not salvation. For there is no respecter, there is no respect of persons with God. That's funny because he said the Jews get it first and the Gentiles. But in the eyes of God, all are men. And yet there's one class of people called Jews. There's another class of people called the church. And then there's unsaved. But all people are people. <laughs> now, what about the heathen? For as many as have sinned without the law shall perish without the law okay Adam and Eve to Exodus 20 did Cain know it was it was wrong to murder anybody absolutely not that's why God couldn't give him capital punishment did no one know that it was wrong for him to drink no When did you realize that mistreating your parents disobeyed God? When the law said, honor thy mother and father. From Exodus 20 to John the Baptist. So Abraham was without the law. Abraham 
Cain, Abel, Noah, Ham, Shem, Japheth will never be judged by the law. Never. They can't. They didn't have it. You know what Moses did with those, those Jews at, at, in Exodus 20? You know when they opened up, we will obey God in everything you do. You know what God, you know what happened there? It's the same thing that happened Saturday morning. You are without excuse. You heard what God said. And you open up your big mouth. But before then, Pharaoh of, of Exodus will not be judged by the law. He died before the law. So when those books are open at Revelation 20 and their works are judged, here are people before the law. We're going to get in a minute. Because Christians don't understand this teaching. For as many as sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. If you don't do what God told you to do, what God expected you, you will die even not having the law. As many as had sinned in the law shall be judged by the law from Exodus 20 to John the Baptist. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You should not plant diverse seed. You should not wear women's clothes. You shall, you know, not have a cow and an ass together. If you break that, you sin under the law, you're guilty. If I go out in the street, and there's a speed signs that say 40 miles per hour, and I go flying down there at 65. Every cop has the right to give me a ticket. And yet, if no speed sign, there's no laws on any of the books about speed limit, and I go down the road 145,000 miles per hour, no one give me a ticket because there's nothing that says it. But we're not done yet shall be judged by the law for not the hearers of the law are just just before God I heard what the law said but the doers of the law shall be justified so anybody that heard the law oh it was taught to me in, in synagogue every yeah, but did you do it James says to them that know it to do good and doeth it not to them it is sin And we'll get into this law as we get into more into Romans. But Moses and the Israelites to John the Baptist would be judged by what God said to Moses and the prophets. But the Gentiles know because they didn't have the law. For not the hearers of the law are justified before God, but the doers of the law shall be judged. You had to do the law, not just hear it. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Genesis 20 verse 19 or 9. Genesis 20 verse 9. Twice we see with Abraham. He says here, this is my sister. And it's revealed. No, it's not your sister. It's your wife. You have made us to almost commit adultery, a great crime. Well, where did that come from? That statement was made long before Exodus 20 ever happened. Where did adultery ever come from when God never said, Thou shalt not commit adultery? It's in the heart. Now we're back at the heart again. What about the heathen that, that never knew in Africa? They never got the word. Their heart. I guarantee if you were going to the darkest parts of Africa, a tribe, never seen a white man, never seen any civilization, I bet you they would have laws that you don't take what's not yours. I guarantee it. Where did that come from if they never got the Bible? It is something that God has imputed to man as a conscience. We know by nature, Romans chapter 1, we know God. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, and God has showed it unto them. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. What are some of those things? It is wrong to kill somebody. Where did that come from? God implanted it in your heart. 
You see why they don't want the Ten Commandments in a courtroom? That would make you guilty. Imagine a guy who's committed a crime walking through the front door of a courtroom reading those things and he had to stand before the judge and say, I'm guilty, you can't do that because the, because his attorney wouldn't make no money. And yet, deep down in his heart, he knows there is a God. He knows God is righteous. He knows what the law says, even though he's probably never heard it. That's what happens to the heathen. What respect did you have with what God has put in your heart, not your mind? How long did you realize you hid from mom and dad when you stole that cookie? You knew you stole it. You knew it wasn't yours. Where did that come from? Where did that I gotta hide? Oh, I hear mommy come. Get out of the cookie. Where is that? That's in your heart as a child to say, you're doing something wrong. Oh, I've never read Exodus 20. I don't care. It's there, isn't it? God has engrafted it to you with birth. Evolution is a pig's eye. Evolution is a dog eat dog and, you know, kill everyone to be the top of the... Not God. God says, I put it in your heart. The only way that you can get that out of your heart is if you get professors to teach it out of your heart. Or you get so perverted for perverting your sexual desire. I'll get it out of your heart. You know what some of these sexual desires that we read in chapter one? You know they bring death eventually? That shall not kill. But we enjoy it. By nature, these things contained in the law. These nature. Nature. It's natural to you. It's just as good as taking fresh peanuts and making your own peanut butter. That's natural. No preservatives until you get to a professional. How's that? We'll be those professors that teaches it out of people. Jesus said it would be greater for a millstone to be tied about your head and you take one person and make him a proselyte and make him too hell for hold of Satan's child than you are. Verse 15. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. So you didn't have to get the law. You already know what's there. You already know what's right and wrong. See, we, we don't live in a primitive world today. We live in electronics and... and it's all about me and go for the gust. But there were times that, listen... And it's seen raw in a child's heart. Written in the hearts, their conscience. There's that conscience. Given by God. And the Bible says you can sear it. Don't ever sear your conscience. That is God's sin detector in your life. That will have you to be faithful to your spouse. That will have you to be honorable to your parents. That will have you to be a respectable Christian in your church. That conscience. Don't you do that. If you do that, you know what's going to happen. And that also comes in your heart. That also comes to those who have never heard the law. So go back to driving like an idiot on a road with no... You get in the car, you drive down the road, a certain thing will tell you, you know what? I need to be responsible behind this wheel. I need to be at a safe speed. If I see people crossing the road, I'm not going to do 140 miles per hour. i got to slow. You see? Now, where did that come from? That comes from conscience. That comes from the heart. I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody. i got to slow down. But no police officer said that. No law book said that. It's in my heart. My heart is made to do right by God. But problem is, sin came in. Before the fall of Genesis 3, we were right. Now we're unrighteous. Bearing witness and their thoughts. The meanwhile, accusing or excusing one another. Well, look at that. We can excuse or we can accuse. 
That's our free will. That's the free will of God for man. What about the heathen in Africa? There they are. They either can reject God, the conscience, and the natural of man that God's given, or they can say, Father, I don't, great white father, what do you want from me? Well, sure can't believe on Jesus Christ because he hasn't heard Jesus Christ. So we, he would have to be in Native America or Inca, South America or Central America, not ever hearing about Jesus Christ, not ever getting a Bible with a law. What would God do to him? I want you to be on your conscience. I want you to be on your heart. And I want you to have the law that I written in your heart. Don't you see those Inca priests? Don't you think that's wrong to sacrifice people? Yeah, I do. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to step out and be different and be against them. Okay. Don't worry about the people never heard. God speaks to them. And to the day they say, no, I'm not going to listen. I don't want anything to do with it. Stop. Stop bugging me, God. I don't want to do right. You go, okay. Go. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You mean even though they haven't heard? Yes. Because God has given you enough in your heart to do what he expects from you. And your secrets. That's not right. Well, God is holy and you're not. Just shut up. Stop judging God. There'll probably be more heathen in Africa that go into glory by their names being written in that book with the works they've done than you had the opportunity to hear Jesus preach on the street and rejected him. Those heathen in Africa might wave bye-bye to you when God tells you to go to hell because you heard the gospel. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Now we just dealt with the Gentiles. Now we're going to look at the Jews. Well, thou art called a Jew. Now this is not me. And rest is in the law. We're saved by the law. And you saw that all through the Gospels. You saw that all through the book of Acts. Makest thou boast of God? You see what the, you see what the law will do. Look how good I am. Look at the tithe I gave. I gave my tithe to the complete tenth of a, a very tiny little cent of a gnat. I gave my tithe to God. What about you? I'm here first on the Sabbath before you are. What about you? And knowest His will. How did the Jews know the will of God? They had the Bible. The Gentiles didn't. Moses and what prophets were written in their time. What's one will of God that they knew? Don't go to Egypt. They kept blowing that one all the time. And proveth the things that are more excellent. Being instructed out of the law. Jesus, you guys went too far on the Sabbath. How dare you heal on the Sabbath? Doesn't the Sabbath say we're supposed to rest? And you crucified God. You think you're saved? By the law? You killed a man missing that one of the Ten Commandments. You missed it. And then you lied about him. Like I said, there's a great study, Ten Commandments. You do one commandment wrong, you, you do three or four. And yet those chief priests sat through the book, the gospel and sat through the book of Acts. We're righteous. You unlearned men. You never heard such letters. How dare you speak to us about this Jesus? Whip them, boys. We're right. Holy, holy, holy for baloney. We're going to die and go to hell. But we're right by the law. No, you're not. No, you're not. 
Because watch what Paul says. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. You know what Jesus said? You heard the blind leading the blind. You fall into the ditch. I think Paul heard that Jesus say that. You guys that are relying on the law are bringing people blindly because you are blind. And the light of them which are darkness. Your light is out. <laughs> and remember he's reading or sending a letter to Jews that are in Rome. Not Jerusalem. You puffed up Jews think you're doing right. You're not doing nothing right. Ooh. You mean we're supposed to tell people about their sins? Paul is. And he's nailing it down. He's nailing them. Remember in, in Acts, the last chapter, you, you remember how well they received him? Some Jews believed. Some didn't. They went their way. People came. Hey, Paul, we need to learn more. You need to give them a good sin lashing to deal with their sins. And then you know what? You got, you got someone who's good because they get right. Then they grow. Don't butter them up. You know, I mean, you know how many turkeys this year were buttered up and fed up and neck cut off? And art confident that thou art a guide of the blind and light of them which are in darkness. Hey, we're not, you ain't got no light. Because Jesus is the light. An instructor of the foolish. People who don't really know, we know. A teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. These are the Pharisees. Paul is hitting his own group. You think you are of who you are. You got universities. Paul studied under one great man. It wasn't great enough. He didn't bring Paul to Jesus. You failed. Thou, then Paul's bringing him to Jesus. Paul won. And he's a Jew. He's a Pharisee. And he's bringing people to Jesus. He's a winner. Thou therefore which teaches another. Oh, here you go, Paul. Teaches thou not thyself? You teach yourself? Thou that preaches a man should not steal. Does thou steal? <laughs> Are you practicing what you preach? That's what Paul's saying. Oh, Paul. Bad boy. Thou sayest a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? Paul, stop it. Thou that horrorous idols. Does thou commit sacrilege? Paul, we removed that commandment out of the Ten Commandments and made ten and two of them. There's no more problem with idols. Knock it off, Paul. And remember the history of Israel, the golden calves, the star of Riphraim. They even made that the serpent on the pole. They made it an idol. Thou that makest thy boast of the law. Look who we are. Yeah, they made. Well, that was uh, Gideon's ephod. They made a flag and a worship. Thou that makest the boast of the law. Look who we are. We're the Pharisees. They did that through all through Jesus. They did that through the apostles in the book of Acts. Look who we are. You can't speak. Smite Paul in the face, will you? Thou that makest, wait a minute, verse 23, that thou makest the boast of the law. See, the law makes you boast. I walked more ladies across the street than you did. You realize if we got to heaven by the law, we would be fighting? How dare you be here in heaven? I won more souls than you did. I gave more money to the church than you did. I pastored more churches than you did. And just keep on going and going and going. It's thank God salvation is built upon Jesus Christ and not what we can do. And he'll write in Galatians, at least we boast. Boast about what? What we did? We can't because we did nothing. Jesus did it all. So shut up and praise Jesus. And these guys are boasting because of the law. There's nothing but Jesus. There is no Jesus. It's what they did. It's what Paul's saying. Though breaking the law dishonoreth thou God. You break the law and you dishonor God. You're praising the law and you're breaking the law. Be like a criminal who's a police officer. 
for the name of God is blaspheming among the Gentiles through you. You are causing those Gentiles to blaspheme God by what you're doing in living. As is written. I wouldn't want that charge. I wouldn't want to cuss God or, or call God a liar because because somebody life. And yet I've heard plenty of times in my, in my ministry of my life of witnessing. Well, I know a Christian who, who did this. I know a Christian who did that. I know. A, yeah, their lives are making you blaspheme God and will not get saved. I feel sorry for that Christian. Or that person. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, this keeps coming up. For circumcision verily profiteth. Then we have this problem in the book of Acts. Did the Jews say, well, you got to take those Gentiles. You got to circumcise them. Remember that? Remember Paul was there for that? You can't be like us if you don't have that operation. If thou keepest the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. All right, you get that operation. But if you break the law, God says, who cares? See, we're under grace. We're under Jesus Christ now. It ain't what you do for an operation. This is what Jews are still doing today. This is what Muslims are doing today. And if you break the law, if you murder and chop off people's heads, I don't care what operation you had. You're a murderer. You ain't going to walk up to God and show your dingling and say, hey, let me in. That ain't going to happen. You're going to show God the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, yeah, circumcision, the Jew, I mean, if the uncircumcision, the Gentile, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? What about that Ethiopian eunuch? Don't you think he was doing what the Jews were supposed to do in order for God to come knocking on his chariot that day? I believe so. I believe that Ethiopian eunuch sought God in every way he could, according to all the standards that the law said. He was going to Jerusalem. It was a time to go to Jerusalem. And God says, I'm going to give him the gospel. That guy never had an operation in his life, but God says, hey, circumcised. And shall not the uncircumcision, whereby, which is by nature, if it fulfilled the law, judge thee. Who by the letter and the circumcision does transgress the law? Violation of the law. You remove your mark as a Jew if you break the law. Jews were circumcision. I said, okay, yeah, you're a Jew, you're circumcised, you break the law, so what? Still going to hell. But Lord, look what... Didn't you tell Abraham, anybody who's not circumcised shall be killed? Yeah, I told Abraham, but we're in, we're under grace now. I'm telling you Jesus Christ. But we're circumcised. No, that don't work no more. Sorry. This must have been a problem for Paul to bring it up. It showed up two or three times in the book of Acts. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Do I need to explain that? Flesh. Missing flesh. <clears throat> Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. For man looketh on the, on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, the heart. And circumcised is that of the heart. Have you got it now? It's heart. Nothing else. We're in a heart relationship with God now. Remember Jesus said, out of the heart man commits adultery, man commits fornication, murder, blah, 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 blah. You got to get that out. You got to cut that out from your heart. Nothing else. Of the heart, in the spirit, 
So see, it's not flesh. Don't go for salvation under the operating table and have them remove flakes or, or skin of your heart. It's a spirit. Remember in John chapter 6, he says the, 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 uh, the flesh profit is nothing after they're thinking, hey, he's telling us to eat Jesus. And the church teaches that's the man. No, that's spiritual. Paul is now saying, hey, we got flesh <clears throat> and we got spirit, heart. That's a quite of a difference between two things of flesh and spirit, Paul's saying here. And not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. They would brag about their circumcision. Paul's like, how about let's brag on Jesus? Paul is doing more bragging than the Jews in the law. He's bragging about Jesus Christ. That's what counts. There are Gentiles who are getting saved in the book of Acts and in Rome. And they got a great testimony by what they've done in the flesh. Absolutely not. What they've done with their heart, their clean living, and going out preaching God. God says, I see that more approved than what you Jews are doing. 